Hello everyone, my name is Jason Kidner and I am a business process consultant here with XPM. And many of the clients that we're working with are doing a server to cloud migration or they might have recently done it. And as they've done, gone through the process, they've noted the differences and there are many between server and cloud, whether it's Jira or Confluence. And so in this video, I'm gonna give you a short tour through Confluence Cloud noting the main differences from uh, your user experience in Confluence Server. So here I'm in a demo instance of Confluence Cloud and you'll see very quickly that it looks different. Um, and I want to walk through the, uh, the toolbar here and then I'm going to walk through what it looks like inside of a space for navigation and also uh, page creation. So first you have a Rubik's Cube in the upper left-hand corner that allows you to switch between Confluence and other Atlassian cloud products that you have access to. You then have a Confluence home button, which will take you to what we see here, this home page that's been set up in this particular instance. This, this can be turned on or off and set up by your admins. And this is just a page, a landing page. You then have a home button that allows you to see spaces that you've worked on recently, pages you've visited or worked on recently, anything that you're working on as a draft, and anything that's been starred. You also see different announcements. If you have team calendars set up, you'll see uh, some stuff around your team calendars here, and also a feed of activity taking place uh, within Confluence. It's also a recent drop-down menu that shows you pretty much everything we saw here on this, uh, this home page as well. Your space drop-down is very straightforward. You'll see recently worked on uh, spaces or visited spaces. And then when you go to view all spaces, this is a very different UI that again allows you to, to filter on your spaces by title or category and some other uh, filter options over here. The people dropdown is new in Confluence Cloud, and this allows you to see uh, users you're collaborating with. It also allows you to start a team, and the, the benefit of starting a team is a, you can at mention a team in a comment or somewhere in a page, where it, whereas in the past you might need to at mention a couple different users uh, uh, that are in a team. You could at mention a whole team of users very quickly uh, using this functionality. There's an apps dropdown, which would take you to any apps that you have installed in Confluence. You can see on this instance that there's a calendar, the Team Calendars app is installed. This is also Confluence Premium uh, tier product, so it comes with analytics that allows you to see different uh, measurements and analytics around uh, space visits and page uh, views, things like that. It also allows you to manage your apps if you're a Confluence admin. There's a tempo option, which is new in the cloud. And when you click this, you can see all the, temp the templates available uh, on Confluence Cloud. And there are 90 templates. This is a lot more templates than you'll see out of the box in your Confluence server or data center. So a lot more uh, thought and effort has been put into templates to use out here. There's the Create button, which I'll talk about shortly. Then you have a search bar. The search bar allows you to search not only Confluence, but also Jira if you have a, an integrated Jira cloud instance. And there is an advanced Confluence search that gives you more advanced functionality to search for pages. You also have a bell icon. This is something you'll notice that's new. This allows you to see notifications on pages that you're uh, directly working with or that you're watching. So you'll not only get an email, from Confluence, you'll also see notifications in the tool. You have a help dropdown with lots of quick links uh, to help articles and shortcuts. You have your gearbox that you're used to seeing if you're a Confluence admin. And then you have your profile and settings. And this is slightly different uh, view out here, but ultimately it, it, these all take you again to your settings, which look very similar to the, that they do on server. That you can look through your tasks, pages you're watching, so on and so forth. So the other big differences that we want to highlight show up when you are go into a space and when you edit or create a new space. So I'm going to go into this engagement 
space for now. And spaces, uh, you land in the overview page like you're used to. Uh, blogs show up uh, like they do in server. Analytics, again, this shows up with Confluence Premium or Confluence Enterprise. Uh, calendars, Team Calendars has been installed, so that, that appears here. And it has a similar UI uh, to what you're used to in server. The space settings show up in a different area. They show up, it shows up up here instead of what you may have been used to we're at the bottom of the left hand toolbar where it says space tools it now shows space settings here and it gives you a set of settings that you're used to, to doing. Uh, you can also see here within cloud there is uh, archive functionality that's being slowly added. Uh, you can bulk archive pages, you can even see archive pages down here at the bottom and these are going to allow you to, to basically take pages out of uh, these page hierarchies and they won't show up again in, in uh, various like child uh, macros and things like that. You can also do uh, space shortcuts out here and then you come to your page area where you can see your page hierarchies in a little different UI than you're used to and notice here you can grab and reorder pages directly on the toolbar. You don't have to go to space settings to do this anymore so you can move pages around and put them underneath other pages or they could become their own page out here at the main menu. That's a really nice feature in cloud. You can also create pages quickly underneath another page with this plus button or you can also do the same by the create button. When you do create pages you will see the new uh, Confluence Cloud Editor which is very different from the Confluence Server Editor. First, you'll note that you can choose the space to create it in over here. You also have the choice of all of those templates to choose from in this sidebar, but you'll default with a blank page. And you can give your page a title. And when you click into the body, you'll notice that there is a very different uh, page editing toolbar at the top. Most of the features are very similar. You can still add tasks or action items, do linking, uh, add files and images, add, do add mentions and emojis. But here's a couple of, of new things. The table interface is very different. Notice you don't see the table toolbar anymore. All the, the things to do within a table are done right here in the table itself, where you can add columns, add rows, or click on a row and delete it. Click on a column, delete it. You can make it bigger and smaller. You can also do some cell options directly on the table itself and can control whether you have header rows or header columns or both. So that is very different. You can also kind of move these, these columns around and adjust them as needed. So that's quite a bit different. Your layouts too are a little bit different here. We can add layouts and notice you can make your page kind of narrow by default or you can make it full width. You can control the different uh, number of columns that appear in your layouts or remove a whole layout very quickly like that. Um, most of the macros are going to be pretty similar. There are a couple of macros that are deprecated and again you can get to macros over here using this plus button drop down and you can always see all the macros doing the view more. Uh, those of you who were used to using the space attachments macro, you notice that that has been deprecated. And the anchor macro, whoops, you notice is also deprecated. There's also some changes to some macros, like the info macro uh, doesn't appear. And in its place, you can. Um, you can actually type info and there's different macros that are going to appear where you can change this to be um, different types of warning, success, different colored text boxes, things like that. That's a new nuance. Those of you who are used to using the open squiggly uh, to get uh, quick access to the list of macros, that has been changed to the forward slash. So when you do a forward slash, you get this list of macros to choose from. But the, the double forward slash still gets you to the dates option out here, and you can still do your quick links to linking 
via control K that brings up that. Uh, once you save your page, you can publish it here. And when you do publish it, notice you can still make comments. Uh, you can still add comments or create JIRA issues directly from the page. Uh, most of these features are still going to be this, similar to things you could do in server. Um, and then there's the more actions with these the three dots icon that allows you to do a number of things over here on the side that are very similar to server. But again, it is a different UI. Uh, if you do, if you have migrated Confluence server to Confluence Cloud, your Confluence pages will still render and look the same as they did in the server. And even your editor will still be using the older editor that you were used to in server. But when you make those, create the new pages, it will start to use the new uh, Confluence editor. So thank you for watching. This has been a quick tour again of Confluence Cloud with the differences from Confluence Server. So I hope uh, this was really helpful. Uh, if it was, please uh, give a like to this video. Uh, and if you do need help uh, with any migration issues or anything with any of your Atlassian tools, please reach out to XBM uh, via our website at xbm.com. And again, I hope you have success in all your Atlassian adventures.